Hello and welcome to Next Day Solar. I'm joined by Nye from Stoke, just a few miles from where we're based in London, and we've come to talk today about all things that Nye's up to. So Nye, I've been cycling past here uh, every day on my way to work, and I always kind of peer in, and there's always lots going on here. So maybe just tell, tell us and some of our viewers a bit about what you're up to here. So, okay, we set up in 2008. Right. Um, I'm a heating engineer by first trade, gas fitter. So we fit in, I was fitting boilers and just doing a lot of general domestic heating work, seeing what the state is of British heating systems. Generally, you know, not so good. Right. Um, and then I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out how to improve conventional gas-based central heating systems. Okay. A few seconds. Yeah. What, are the what are the differences? Okay, well, solar photovoltaic, generating electricity. Yep. Solar thermal, generating heat. Right. Predominantly for hot water. Right. And does um, it work, that stuff? I mean, oh, amazingly well, right. yeah. I mean, I've, I've got solar thermal on my house just down the road. I've been running it on there for 10 years. Right. And those panels actually were second-hand energy. And in the winter, obviously it's darker, obviously yeah, it's colder, yeah, yeah, yeah. the pipes are cold. Does it, can it still give you hot water? Uh, yeah, so in, in the autumn and in the spring, you'll pre-charge your tank. Right. So you might bring the tank up to, say, 20, 30, 40 degrees. Okay. So your gas boiler has to work less hard. You're Understood. reducing your, your, your gas consumption. Okay. Uh, so biomass, you're burning um, generally wood, wood pellets or wood logs. Uh, to heat your home, uh, either space heating or heating water, yeah. or both. Um, so wood burning is carbon neutral because the carbon that's released from the combustion of the log fuel is absorbed by the regrowth. Right. Um, and that's over approximately a 10-year cycle. In planetary terms, it's a blink of the eye. Yeah, you're right. Um, so it'll always win against any type of fossil fuel heating. Yeah. Because um, that was something I didn't really understand because I see plastered above your showroom here, you know, carbon zero, zero carbon yeah. future, and then you've got the wood. And I think to most people, they see timber, and certainly me at first glance, yeah. I think chopping down trees is not a good thing. But as you said, if there's that replanting going on, then it's... It, exactly. The, the, the way that the fuel is sourced is vitally important. Right. You know, um, we work with a supply partner called Certainly Wood. Okay. They source all of their logs um, near Herefordshire, okay. um, and we know that the, the woodlands are properly cycled. Right. It's a really important part of it. Okay. But the other thing that's really important is making sure that the appliances uh, have uh, very low particulate emission levels. Yeah. So we've got you know, the separate issues of what's best for the planet. Sometimes it doesn't always align with what's best for human health. Right. Um, by using the correct appliances and the correct fuel, we minimise particulates. But we, we, try, we, we, we have all sorts of other technology that we also use here. So we have electrostatic filtration, we have stoves with internal catalysts. There's all sorts of new technology that's coming in now, um, including computer-controlled primary air on stoves, to further reduce the particulate output by encouraging what's called secondary combustion in the stove. Okay. And I mean, wood obviously generates a lot of heat and it's obviously very atmospheric as well. It's yeah, I mean, but we found people in London really like the stoves. We started fitting more stoves, we got a name for it. Right. We've always done the other things, but now it feels like there's a change happening okay. and people are becoming more interested in um, taking on more of this technology into their homes. Right. Heat pumps, right. great way to get rid of the gas boiler altogether. Because um, you yeah. can't really, if you install a stove, unless you've got a very small property, you can't get rid of your gas boiler. But with a heat yeah. pump, you could look at doing that right, because you could run your heat, your heat for the rads and then also your hot water as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we always see stoves as a form of supplementary heating. Okay. You know, we would never recommend that the stove is the primary heat source. Right. It's a great way to boost the internal temperature quickly. Okay. And obviously it's nice to look at, yeah. there's that bonus. Yeah. So moving on to air source heat pumps. So yeah. it's a sort of small but growing part of what you guys do, would you yeah, say, yeah. would you say that? Yeah. There might be some of our viewers watching that sort of are thinking about it, have heard of it, might have one in the home they just moved into and not know about it. What's the deal with air source heat pumps? Do they work, do they not? Yeah, I mean, is yeah. it a lot of work to install? What's, you know? Yeah, okay, well they absolutely do work. Right, yeah. that's good. They, they often look very similar to an air conditioning unit right. outside. Right. Could you um, tell them apart if you really had to outside? Yeah, you it... could, yeah. Generally, a heat pump's a bit bigger. Okay. There's, there's a bit more going on inside it. Right. Because you're transferring the heat to water, um, which is then going into the hot water tank. Right. So in real-world terms, the efficiency is around 300%. Right. So if every one kilowatt of electricity, right. you can create three kilowatts of heat. So, so you put this big box outside your home. That's great. It looks like an air conditioning unit. Are you then done or is there more work? To, yeah, to so be done? then you have um, the tank. Right. I mean, there's, there's a few ways you can do this. You'll always need to have a hot water tank. Right. Sometimes we'll have two tanks in a single cylinder. Okay. 
So we have a buffer vessel at the bottom right. where heat from the heat pump is transferred into. Um, and then it goes from that buffer vessel to the heating circuit, right. whether that be radiators, which would normally be oversized okay. if they're connected to a heat pump, okay. because the flow temperature is lower, right. or ideally underfloor heating, which is best suited, because with underfloor heating, you have a big surface area to deliver heat to the atmosphere, which means um, you can run at a low flow. Yeah. From a safety point of view, and there was actually a property down the road from me, and a boiler was installed uh, mm -hmm. on the day, and at three o'clock the next morning, the whole house went up in flames. What? Yeah, it's quite bad. And it was a gas boiler in a loft, obviously been some foul play by someone somewhere. Yeah. But from a safety point of view, you're taking this potentially outside your home, because they have to be outside, right? So yeah. you've just got this boiler. So really, you're not got any gas potentially in your property. So you are yeah. making things maybe slightly safer? Um, okay, so, you know, I, I've been a gas fitter for a long time and I would say that if you have a gas safe registered installer yeah. working in your home, it is, it is very safe. Okay. There's so many uh, uh, tests to do to make sure that there's no leaks and right. things like that. Right. I think what probably happened there was that it was an unregistered yeah. installer. Yeah. So you're removing your gas boy. So you've got your tank in your, in your property and does your, your existing tank, if you've got a gas boiler, does that need to be changed then to something new? Um, so there are ways of keeping the existing tank. Right. Um, we can fit um, manifolds, uh, low loss headers that allow us to um, transfer the heat from the heat pump. Okay. So we, we can, we will always try and keep as much of the original system as possible right. in an effort to minimize cost. But sometimes right. there'll be a trade off in terms of efficiency. Understood. So it can be better to just put a new switch tank, out. Put a new tank in. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. And then obviously you're transferring a lot of the energy usage from natural gas, that sort of ga gas. And there's lots of places in the UK that don't have gas. I was in a village recently, they've got nothing, just oil burners. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're transferring that to electric energy I mean am I going to see my electricity bill go bang like that or what's what well, yeah it will definitely increase <laughs> okay. yes quite substantially so um, the heat pumps we fit would normally be um, sort of between five to 24 kilowatts and, and obviously you're consuming a lot more electricity consuming less gas I mean is it sort of work out roughly about the same I mean you you drop in your gas bill but you're increasing or is it um, okay. is electricity a bit more expensive I, I don't know much so about that ideally the, the um, efficiency of the house should be improved. Right. Insulation, double glazing, right. loft insulation. Okay. You know, we have to, as homeowners, we have to make every effort yeah. to improve the thermal efficiency of our house. We want to lose as little heat as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, if every effort is made to reduce heat loss, then a heat pump can be um, can cost about the same as a gas boiler to run. Right. Okay. If you were to just directly retrofit a heat pump into the average British home, okay. the running cost would almost certainly be higher. Okay. 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 And that's just because the housing stock isn't isn't great in terms of heat loss. Understood. Yeah. Okay. So. Are there any government grants available to people or any sort of grants that can help people sort of go towards one of these air source heat pumps or is it basically you've got to have the cash and you've got to do it yeah, on your own? Yeah, so I mean there is the renewable heat incentive um, which uh, pays you for the energy that you generate and consume at home right. but everything's changing at the moment okay. and uh, we're sort of waiting to see where the government is going to lead us yeah. really. Yeah. So. Um, there's, there's definitely a change coming in next year that I'm aware of, and that's, I think it's to the Part L building regulations, and that's right. every new build home will have to have some form of renewable energy system. Okay. So I think it's either seven panels on the roof, right. which as we know in London, is quite tricky yeah, if you're building really a relatively, is. you know, la la traditional London home, or it needs to have a renewable system. Now, I think okay. for 2025, there'll be no more gas boilers yes. fitted to UK yes. homes as well. And now surely that's massive for you guys, because that's the sort of, well, if I can't have a gas boiler, I've got to basically have an air source heat pump, essentially, yeah, yeah, or yeah. There are, are there other options? That... Well, from what I understand, hydrogen is um, being seriously considered right. as a fuel source. Right. But there are lots of issues in terms of the production of hydrogen. Okay. It, it, it requires a lot of energy. Right. Um, generally, electrolysis, um, you know, uh, splitting water. Right. Um, and that energy often comes from the, the burning of fossil fuels. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that, that needs to be dealt with. At the moment, an air source heat pump really is the only right. viable way. Right. Um, so there's potentially a great opportunity, yes. but lots of technical challenges to overcome, right. especially with the housing stock in London. Right. Yes. And they can't go inside in a sort of vented area, it has to be outside. It needs that... to be outside, right. yeah. Right. It needs to be open to the atmosphere. Right. Yeah. So typically down the side there. of a house, pathway, something like that. I mean, um, we usually need to have a clearance of about one to one and a half metres in front. Right. Um, uh, and 
you know, you won't always get that between houses. Right. So, right. yeah, right. usually in the back garden is okay. ideal. Okay. So, yeah. So if you had to, I suppose, give the biggest advantage and the biggest disadvantage of air source heat pumps, what would they be in your, in your view? Okay, well, the biggest advantage is zero carbon, right. as far as I'm concerned. Right. Okay. Um, and, and I suppose uh, the biggest disadvantage is, you, you know, you're going to have to have a hot water tank. Right. And a lot of people are used to having the Because they've got the combi, combi boiler, right? Exactly. Okay. The convenient little white box that goes in the cupboard. Does everything. Heats and, your yeah. Home. And that's, that's because gas is so full of energy. Fossil right. fuels are so calorific and yes. we're so hooked yeah. because they're so convenient. You know, there's so much innovation going on right. in this industry at the moment. We've been looking at the new red heat pumps, which have a really interesting design. Right. You know, they don't look like the air conditioning unit. Okay. They look a bit more like a kind of futuristic water butt. Cool. Sounds good. You know, I think people like that sort of stuff. And I think... Uh, with a bit more time, we'll probably find that, you know, the tanks are shrinking and the heat pumps are making less noise and, yeah. Now, we've just done a job for a customer where we've installed solar PV and they've had a heat pump fitted. Do you yeah. come across that often? I mean, it's, I think it's quite rare where the customer's that sort of focus on the environment to go, right, I'm off the grid with gas, I'm off the grid with energy. You know, does that, does that ever um, come up? Have you seen that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you come across some very highly motivated people and right. it's a joy to work with them because, you know, they, yeah, they just want to, they, you know, they, don't, they want to minimise their impact. Right. And if the motivation's there, then, you know, it's awesome. all totally possible. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, Nye, that was incredibly informative for me. I mean, I've learned a huge <laughs> amount. So I think in summary, what we're sort of saying here is there's going to be this great shift towards the sort of these renewable air source heat pumps in time mm. but sort of wood burning just sourcing the wood in the right sort of way if it's come from the right forest that's carefully managed and is, is high growth is also kind of a supplementary way of adding that extra boost of heat which would otherwise draw lots of energy which is yeah. something that i sort of really didn't think about before i just saw wood and thought bad but actually i think you actually genuinely yeah. have shown me today that there are other ways and it and it's not all bad all our stoves comply with the Eco Design Directive, the European Union's Eco Design Directive, right. which the UK government has committed to. So, yeah. providing you're happy with the wood and you can get the wood sustainably, you're not polluting the environment in the, in the traditional stove. Not, way. not in the way that I think it's right. often perceived, but it's got to be done in the right way. Yeah. Okay. Now, as part of some of the things we do here at Next Day Solar, we're going to set Nye the five minute solar plane challenge. Now, I've brought along one to show Nye that I've made earlier and uh, we normally get kids to do these when we do educational pieces <laughs> that's no that's no disrespect to the kids or to Nye and okay. we've got our kit with us so Nye we're going to give you the best part of five minutes five minutes and I'll time okay. it okay um, to see if you can rebuild and replicate it's this so plane. hot in here my hands are sweating <laughs> but I'll, yeah he's feeling the heat already yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. the plane you've got your okay. kit to the right of you there okay and I'll just get my timer okay. so ready steady solar <laughs> okay so now these are one of our solar toys that nice having a building. This is one of the simplest ones, it's the solar plane, but it just has the small solar panel on top. Um, and when the light hits the solar panel, it will spin the propeller, which is kind of a nice way of having a little toy on the windowsill. Notice when it's a nice bright day, but also kind of informing children about some of the benefits of solar energy. And often I get asked questions, does the plane fly? Sadly, the plane doesn't fly. <laughs> we wish it would. Um, but I think, you know, in time to come, as the panels become more and more efficient, solar will definitely be a kind of a key part of their planes. There are definitely lots of boats around now that are sort of traveling at six, seven, eight knots, which are covered in solar panels um, that are charging batteries. So he's doing a pretty good job. I think he's gonna do it, guys. Ah, okay. <laughs> Get the sticky pad on. And he's done it! He's done it! Did it work? It works! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Round of applause. Okay, in well. five minutes to the nose. Well, well, well that was done. intense. That was, that was brilliant. That, that, re that was, I mean, that was to the second. That was brilliant. <laughs> For a normal sort of terrace house, like a three bed terrace, this is probably the sort of size right. you, you should expect to have. Bigger houses, you might have a double height unit. Right. Looks like an aircon unit to me, looks great. And you basically, you, you, you put some bases on the ground, rubber mounts, yeah, stop it vibrating, exactly. is that the kind of idea? Yeah, yeah. Did they get permanently fixed into the ground or they just sort of sat there? Um, different options for okay. different types of installs we can also wall mount as well right understood yeah. understood and then you've basically got i mean generally single phase or three phase um depends on the consumption right. this is single phase 
Yeah. Right, okay, so someone needs an isolator outside, bit of electricity, yeah, and that's yeah, it. And then yeah. are there like lots of pipes running inside uh, yeah, so or? Pipes coming through. Right. And they're going to the tank. Right. Which uh, maybe we should have a look yeah, at that as well. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Well, that's your, that's your air source heat pump. Um, this, this cylinder has uh, the, the twin tanks. So there's the, are it's, you sure it's not the next SpaceX rocket? Uh, yeah, it looks yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a fair bit going on there, but um, yeah, so essentially there's a buffer vessel at the bottom and the hot water tank above. And then we've got the, the controls for the heat pump fixed onto the, the tank here. This is manufactured by a company called Joule, um, and it's a, a very neat and tidy cylinder. Wow. I mean, it looks it looks very, I mean, obviously, can, to, to when you look at a normal hot tank, obviously the hot tank's quite simple. The heating system that goes all around it yeah. is, is obviously quite complex. And actually, whilst we're looking here, there's lots of pipes going on, but actually that's that's everything, right? That's yeah, your heating, yeah. that's your hot we've, water. We've that's everything, everything. On, the, on the tank, right. yeah, exactly. I mean, it's quite large. I mean, are there smaller ones? Because I mean, that's I mean that's taller than me, that. That's yeah, huge. That's yeah, huge. yeah. There, there are smaller options, right. yeah. And you know, if you don't have that sort of height, then you can have a normal cylinder and then you can have a manifold that right. does the same thing is that buffer vessel, right. which is at the bottom. Well, we've had an amazing time here at Stoke in London. We've learned a lot about wood burning stoves, which are great for the environment because they're using renewable trees that are grown from the right places to burn and they're really efficient. And Nye and his team have got even better ways of taking some of that smoke and cleaning it, essentially. If that's, is that the right way? Sort of cleaning it or processing it in a way? Uh, it's removing particulates. Removing, yeah. amazing. So that's one option if you're looking for a different way of heating your home. And then we've seen from Nye his air source heat pump and his hot tank system. And that's a great way of powering your home's hot water and also your heating as well. Um, and that can be coupled with solar PV as well, such as the one that we've seen on the roof behind us, just as we're filming today. And that's a way that you could switch off from the grid from all the natural gas and all of your electricity from the grid and lead a cleaner and greener lifestyle. So if you are interested, come and say hi to Nye, come and see Stoke in North London. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed watching and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.